Video editing is essential if anyone is ever gonna see our content online from our church or from our conference gatherings. I have edited a lot of sermon videos in my lifetime, and in this four-part series, we have looked at using these guidelines to design excellent sermon slides. We then set up those slides using ProPresenter 7 to output two formats for the main screens and for the stream slides. So instead of sending the stream slides to a switcher, we recorded the output. Now in this video, we're gonna take that recording into Premiere Pro, which is my current editing software of choice, and we're gonna edit the sermon video for YouTube. Hi everybody, my name is Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs, and thank you for joining me on this video. Here I'm in Premiere Pro, and the specific thing that we're gonna be looking at is how do I use the output capture from ProPresenter 7 to add sermon notes to our sermon recording. I've created a new project here in Premiere and all of my assets are already loaded into a timeline. I'm not gonna talk about aligning the footage and audio in this video, so check out the other video I did on that topic. My timeline is open and you can see here all of our imported media. We have our main follow camera, our broadcast audio, as well as our notes that we recorded from the output of ProPresenter and now we'll have them right here in Premiere. Okay, so in every video I edit, I do some stuff the same exact way. So now I'm gonna do that stuff. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and we are going to splice out the actual sermon. So where does she start talking? The bumper comes up here and gotta get the mic pack on. Well, that wasn't the greatest beginning to the talk, but we'll go for it. So here I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna splice this apart here and I'll just drag that back a little bit so I have an ob obvious separation. And now I'll go here to where the music starts and I'll scroll back until she finishes praying and I'll find the end part. Amen. And I'll cut it off right there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to drag this back a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gain the audio. So I'm going to click the shortcut G, keyboard shortcut G, and I'm going to open up the audio gain. And now we're going to go to normalize all peaks to zero. And now that should uh, boost our levels. That's nice. If you try to do that little trick with uh, the full clip, it's not going to work because there's really high parts and there's really low parts. So we want to make sure we have as much consistency as we can before we boost our gains. So now I'm going to apply a multi-band compressor. I've got a folder here with all of my goodies that I use on a frequent basis. So I'll drag that in here. And in our effects control panel, I'm going to click edit on that compressor. And I'm going to change the default to broadcast. So that's going to give me a good sound. Great, so now we can go back to the beginning. I'm going to set my in position. And now I'm going to listen to the beginning of the message. Oh, I'm Gabby right there. I'm going to bring in her nameplate. So I'm going to put that about right here. And today we're continuing I'm going to decide how long we want to keep this up. And before I tell you, I'll let you get Yeah, that's probably good. About 7, 10 seconds is how I kind of like to leave it up. Okay, so that is pretty much everything I do. So I'm really excited. From now on, we get to add some more steps to go one step further. I do want to point out that if you're sending the stream output of ProPresenter 7 to a switcher or to your streaming computer via an NDI link, a video over the network, you can still record the output and edit in this way. If you stream the stream out layer with the same machine, then you'll set up the themes without the green keys, so you can't record a stream out with green key backgrounds, unfortunately. So with the Pro 7 capture in my timeline, I lined it up with the scratch audio captured by the output in the, we talked about in the last video. And if you don't have scratch audio in your recordings, find the spot where the first slide is put on the screen and align it that way. If you can't record the graphics output from ProPresenter, here's an alternative method you can use to accomplish this. If you're streaming, you could just take the recording and align it on your timeline. But if you're not streaming, set a camera in the room looking at the screen and literally record what comes up on the projectors. This is something you can align with the video while editing. Now you know roughly where the graphics need to be. Then inside of ProPresenter, apply the themes for the scripture and notes slides on the operator screen. Then export the lower third slides from Pro 7 and add them to the edit manually. It's gonna take you about 10 minutes versus the four minutes, but 10 minutes is still way faster than watching the whole video and looking for where the edits are in the notes. So back in our edit, let's apply some color key effects because we wanna start working on the sermon notes layer. So I'm gonna go up to edit, and also in my uh, folder is the color key effect, so I'll drag that down there, and then I'm gonna go back to, I can see my program output, and this layer is currently disabled, so I'll turn that back on. And now here in my effect, I'm gonna select the dropper on the color key effect, and now I can select that. So that's going to completely remove the green. There are some settings that you can use to adjust some stuff here if things aren't perfect. 
the color tolerance and the edge thin. Let's find a bit of sermon note to make sure that everything is perfect. So now that we're on the first note slide, I'm gonna go ahead and listen to make sure that this slides in the proper location and it lines up well with what she's saying. This is a little error correcting that we can do here because we're editing the video and have an ISO of the main follow camera and an ISO of the graphics out. In a typical live environment, the lower thirds output from Pro 7 gets sent to a video switcher where it becomes baked onto the live video to produce an output that goes to the live stream as well as the screens in the room, and this output often gets recorded to edit the sermon video. I use the word baked because this output can't have the graphics removed from it. There's nothing wrong with this process, but if the ProPresenter operator makes any mistakes, we have to just live with it for the online sermon video. It might not be worth the extra effort for you, but whenever possible, I like to record an ISO output of the center follow camera with no graphics. This footage can also be used to edit shorts and reels for social media, just like I outlined in that video where I edited sermon videos into shorts as a great way to create content. Even if your graphics operator is fantastic, when you go to create shorts using footage with the sermon notes baked in, the shorts might look something well like this, and then you're stuck. I recently had a short conversation on Instagram with David Marvin, formerly from The Porch. It was short, but it happened, and he totally agrees with me. Does this make sense? Instead of scripture coming up a second after the pastor starts to read it, we can drag it back to come up just before they start. Do you remember when the pastor began reading that scripture and then said, wait a minute? Yeah, but the operator already had the slide on the screen. We can remove that for the posted video. Yes, this is nitpicking, but I believe that excellence honors God and inspires people. So if distractions can be eliminated, I'm all up for it. With these sermon notes added into our video, we can go ahead and render this video and get it posted online. There's nothing wrong with not being able to or just not wanting to go through the hassle of adjusting notes on slides. In an ideal world, and the world becomes more ideal as we train and equip our team members with the tools they need to succeed. Following the sermon slide guidelines helps make slides consistent and consistency helps us better predict repetition. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Please consider subscribing to my channel and like this video. I help teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence. So, so have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.